these two sensors have been successfully reporting for over 45 minutes now. I hope I'm not cursing it by showing you this. Welcome back. Today, we're going to work on the Predator Project again. It's the holidays, and so I've got some time to work on this thing. This thing that you all love. This thing that I haven't worked on in for freaking ever. Today we're going to solder the connectors onto this breakout board. What it does is it allows us to connect the two 9-axis gyros and read from them simultaneously. As you might recall from the previous videos, and if you haven't seen them yet, please check out my playlists for the earlier versions, the proof of concept only used one sensor. And the problem with that is you actually need two to have a turret that you can steer while you move around because you need to be able to measure one and the other separately so that you can compare the difference between the two. Otherwise, when you move your body, the whole turret will move. In today's video, I'm going to show you a little bit about my soldering setup. As you can see here, I've got a thick piece of glass on my countertop. It's about a quarter inch thick. And what this does is it insulates the countertop so that I don't accidentally burn things if I drop the soldering iron or drop a blob of molten solder. The soldering iron I'm using here is a low wattage soldering iron. This is an ancient 30 watt soldering iron from Radio Shack, so that dates me a little bit. Um, and as you can see here, I've got a brand new sharp tip on here. Uh, I just machined this tip so that you could see it when it's fresh. Uh, I realize some of you may have never soldered before, so I'm going to try and cover everything you need to know for soldering a small circuit board like this from scratch. Next up is the solder. Whenever you're soldering a small circuit board, or any kind of small electronics for that matter, you want a very thin solder. You can see here if I compare it to the pinouts for this board, it's uh, about the same size. It's 22 thousandths, about half a millimeter. Um, and this is rosin core solder, again from Radio Shack. Um, this is my, my small spool. Uh, I try to save these uh, because they're only useful for small electronics. Anything bigger I use a, a larger diameter solder. And while I've been talking, this soldering iron's been preheating. You can see here the tip has taken on a bit more of an orange color. That's the oxidation, letting us know that it's just about ready to tin. Uh, tinning is the process of coating the soldering iron or the wire or whatever you're about to solder with a thin layer of, uh, of the solder. And what this does is it allows the heat to conduct a little bit easier. It also prevents corrosion, um, and ultimately it'll help you get your parts together easier. Next I'll come in with a thickly wadded fold of paper towels and I'm going to wipe the tip off. This is going to help coat any areas that I might have missed when I was tinning, but it's also going to remove any large droplets that might be on the tip of the iron so they don't contaminate my circuit board. These prongs on these connectors are very close together and so if any blobs of solder get in between them they can short circuit your connectors. So you want to make sure you have a really nice sharp and clean soldering iron for any kind of circuit board operation. Hopefully if you're attempting a project like this, you've already got a breadboard. Um, but if not, it really helps to assemble these circuits on a breadboard because it keeps your pins aligned and keeps everything nice and straight and, and, and consistent while you solder your breakout board together. Um, so you can see here I've placed my strips of pins into the breadboard and then I'll lay the breakout circuit on top. Uh, and now we're ready to go. So I'm going to get my soldering iron, I'm going to get my solder, and we're going to get in a comfortable position here. If you're like me and you have shaky hands, it really helps to have something to sit on, a stool or a chair. And also, if you notice here, I've got my palm resting on the counter. Um, this just helps me keep my hands steady as I come in here to solder. So zooming in a little bit, you can see here we've got the pins ready, we've got uh, the board ready, and so this is quite easy to do actually. We just simply come in with the soldering iron and we're going to try and touch the little ring on the circuit board as well as the pin at the same time to preheat them and then just feed the solder uh, into the connection itself. You don't want to put it directly on the iron and you don't want to put it uh, on only one of the two pieces. You just put it on the whole board at once. Um, you can see here if, you're, if you have a successful solder joint it's going to look like a little cone. Uh, if it looks like a ball or it looks like a big blob, you probably don't have your soldering iron hot enough or you're using the wrong kind of solder. So very quickly here we'll go through and just hit the rest of these connections. Um, it might take some practice, but once you get the hang of it, this is really quite easy. Even though I fast forwarded here, this whole operation only took about a minute and a half. 
And now we just want to give it one last inspection here. Give it a close look to make sure everything looks like a cone. Um, we're going to make sure it's all cooled off before we remove it from the circuit board. Um, and there we have it. We've soldered the pinouts to our, uh, to our multiplexing board. Um, and again, this is going to allow us to simultaneously read measurements from two different sets of gyroscopes, accelerometers, uh, and magnetometers. And now over to the breadboard, where I've preassembled the two 9-axis gyros as well as the multiplexer so we can start figuring out our circuit. You can see here I've added the power buses as well as the power circuit. Whoa, whoa, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We need to talk about how a breadboard works. Let's back it up a little bit. This is a breadboard. It's used to experiment with circuits. What you have here is two power buses on the sides. You can see here there's a positive row and a negative row, and all of these ports are connected. Likewise, in the center of the breadboard, we have 10 columns, A through E and F through J. A through E are connected to each other, and F through J are connected to each other, but A is not connected to F, and so on. This continues all the way down the breadboard, which allows us to connect numerous components to our circuit. So what does this mean for creating something practical? Well, let's say we take a battery and we connect it to the positive bus on one side of the board and the negative bus on the other. Then we can add a light bulb to the middle and we're gonna connect it to any row, it really doesn't matter. If we then connect those rows to the power buses, the light bulb lights up. All right, back to the Predator project now. You can see here we've wired both sides of the power buses together and then we've added connectors to power up the gyros as well as the multiplexer. Now if we take a battery and we connect it to either one of these power buses, it will complete the circuit and energize any of the components that you have connected to either side of the power bus, thereby energizing any components that we have on the board. In this next photo you can see where I've connected both the clock and the data circuits to the respective slots on the multiplexer. And finally you can see here where I've connected ports A4 and A5 to the respective data and clock ports on the multiplexer. Uh, it just happens to be that ports A4 and A5 on most Arduino units uh, are the dedicated ports for any kind of serial communications like this. Um, but larger boards like Megas and, and larger may actually have dedicated ports for these. So with all this together now, all I have to do is plug in the Arduino to my USB port, program it, and tell it to output the data from these gyros. And here it is working. You can see these numbers flying by are in two columns. You got one and two, and each one of those is the respective readouts from the two gyros that I have here. Um, in future videos, I'll go through the code and the logic behind it. I'll also post links to my GitHub once I've got the code cleaned up and, and well commented so that you guys can download it and use it for your own purposes. Um, but that's all for now. Uh, again, my next video will go into the code a little bit more, and I'll hopefully have something a little bit more practical uh, demonstrating the Predator turret. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.